Hey everyone and welcome to Custom Spray Mods. Now over the next few episodes we're going to go over the basics of spray painting. There's a lot of different products and a lot of different methods out there so it can be confusing. So hopefully over the next few videos we can give you the information needed to get your project underway and get an awesome finish. In this episode we're going to go over the equipment you need to get started. We're going to go over compressors and see what the best compressor is for what type of job and um, yeah we're going to do that now. It's going to be cool. Check it out. Okay, so when it comes to compressors, it can be confusing. There's a lot of different options. You've got tank size, motor size, horsepower, uh, air delivery, CFM. There's all these different specs and settings uh, on a compressor that can be quite confusing and it can be a bit misleading as well. So I'm going to talk to someone here at VG Auto Paints that's been dealing with compressors for quite a while and uh, hopefully answer some of those questions we have about compressors. We've got Pete here from VG Auto Paints and I'm just going to ask a few questions about compressors. How long have you been working with air compressors? I must have been working with them for around 25 years. What kind of air tools have you used? All sorts, uh, rattle guns and air drills and sanders and air saws, all sorts and, of things. Uh, so what's the best way to get a rating on a compressor? Uh, I always find the free air delivery is the, the best way because lots of different companies rate them differently. They, they use all different measurements, horsepower, kilowatts, you know, CFM and the piston displacement, but usually free air delivery is you know what the compressor can pump out, you know, straight flat out. So that's the best way to compare them. Um, also, tank size does, does tank size really play a big part? Yeah, well, tank size will help if you know you don't want the motor to run constantly all the time. You know, so preferably you can suit the compressor to the application, the tools you're using. So the um, the compressor is not uh, running constantly and it gets a chance to fill up and then use the air and you know, have a rest. Yeah. Now, so for a full respray with a normal conventional spray gun, what would be the best compressor to use? Well, normally we'd say around a 200 litres a minute would you know, do a, a, um, a full respray. You can do little jobs if you're just painting a guard or a door or you know, just a spot repair or something, you can get away with a much smaller compressor. but you know, if you're going to be going down the whole side of a car, 200 litres a minute will do it. Okay, cool. Thanks a lot. Okay, so I've got this compressor. It's a 2.75 horsepower, 205 litres per minute. Now I'm going to test it. I'm going to spray this car using water. I've got a conventional type spray gun. It's a 1.4 mil nozzle. I'm going to use 45 psi. And uh, yeah, my normal three turns on the fluid nozzle and we'll see how far we can go before the motor kicks in on the compressor and before we start losing pressure, if we lose pressure. So, let's check it out. Compressor's all loaded up. You can see the gauge there. It's got 60 psi. It goes to about 45 psi. Okay, so we've tried a spray gun, now I'm going to try an air sander. This uses a lot more air consumption than a spray gun because it's always running. Uh, any air tool is always going to use a lot more air than a gun or a rattle gun or anything like that. So. <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, now I'm going to try a rattle gun. I mean, you don't really know, you don't normally need to run these very long to undo a, a wheel nut, but. Okay, so in the past you might have seen me spray painting uh, in the, this little warehouse here. Now we've got a spray booth, uh, spray painting in there. I'll just show you the compressor we use at this workshop. It's designed to run more than one spray gun. It can run an air tool quite easily, air sander for quite a while. And well, this is it here. Um, I might just be able to make it out. It's pretty big. We've got a big tank and a big motor. And it's uh, yeah, it's a it's a bit of a bit of a truck, but it goes really well. Okay, so the airline comes from the compressor, and just before it goes into the spray booth, we've got two filters here. That is a uh, what's called a toilet roll filter. Toilet roll filter there, and here is the uh, air filter regulator. So this filters oil and water and it's um, also got a regulator on it. That's what we have just before the spray booth in here. So here is the toilet roll filter. Now why it's called a toilet roll filter is because it's basically this canister here and inside it is, oh you can see it there, it's a toilet roll. And that absorbs in all the moisture and uh, stops that from going into your airline and into your paint because that's going to affect your finish. There we go. It's a toilet roll. I don't think it's not a normal toilet roll in there. It's, it's, a, it's a special kind of fabric filter that looks like a toilet roll. Something about this here in, um, in Sydney, looking at about 170 bucks, but it's definitely uh, worth it if you're doing a lot of spray painting. There's also other things you need like air fittings. Uh, make sure you have the correct fittings for your spray gun. Uh, if you're running HVLP, then you want some uh, high flow fittings uh, because you need a high volume of air. So um, yeah, make sure you get fittings as well. Uh, here are some other things you need, uh, you might need when you're setting up your spray equipment. A uh, air regulator that goes on the gun is always helpful. So you know the air pressure straight before it comes through the spray gun. Also a uh, water trap. Um, this is a disposable one. It's quite cheap and um, it, it lasts about one respray of a car. Now uh, here is a uh, reusable water separator. It's got a bleeder valve on it. A bit more expensive but will last a lot longer. Yeah. Okay, what I've got here are two spray guns and we'll see what they recommend. So air consumption they say is 250 litres per minute or 8.8 .8 CFM. Well, we tested it on a 200 litre per minute compressor and it worked just fine, so they're kind of over exaggerating there a little bit. Let's see, uh, high water. Now I'm going to check out the Segola. Yeah, pretty much the same. 250 litres per minute. Uh, for HVLP, 400 litres per minute. It's about over exaggerating, but the HVLP gun. If you get a HVLP gun, you're going to need a much bigger compressor, almost double what you would need from a conventional gun. So, high volume, a bit different to uh, low pressure. Okay, well, uh, there you go. We tested a compressor that could run 200 litres per minute, sprayed the side of a car, and it seemed to uh, hold its pressure throughout the whole spray cycle. I mean, uh, I just did one coat, by the time you uh, fill up the pot and do another coat, it's going to uh, give the give the compressor some time to, to rest. Most piston compressors need to rest for 30% of the time that they're being in use. So um, yeah, 
the 200 liters per minute air compressor is just fine. That one I, I tested was 275 horsepower. Uh, it's probably the biggest one you can plug into a wall outlet. So yeah, if you're doing a full respray, anything 2.75 horsepower, 200 liters per minute and above is perfect. Uh, anything below isn't really going to cut it. Be good for wheels or small panels. Uh, anything below that is fine. But above, you need something bigger. But otherwise, um, that uh, piece of equipment and the airline and air fittings will definitely get you started when it comes to spray painting. Now, next time, we're going to go over spray guns.